I would like to link back to one discussion we had during the Adaptation Futures Conference, which uh, was held uh, last year. So um, it's important that we recognize um, the need to, to change, the need for transformation, um, but in a way that it doesn't parallelize um, decision makers and also the society. So um, as soon as we reach the stage that people think there's nothing we can do anymore, um, then uh, so to say panic uh, doesn't, doesn't help anymore. So we need awareness. We, we need to name the root causes. And I really enjoyed uh, Professor Galanchier's um, uh, presentation because it's uh, it's uh, kind of a, a hidden uh, issue. Uh, it's really talked about and it's really, really important. So we need to um, show and make awareness for those uh, hidden uh, processes and uh, we need to initiate action and also change um, with a little bit of panic, but not too much because uh, I think that's what uh, parallelized. So um, in a way, this was um, the motivation why uh, we came up with our uh, report. It's called Interconnected Disaster Risk Report. Um, it is a um, report which is designed to be an annual report. We started with it last year for the first time and we would like to come out with it every year um, now. And the motivation was that even for myself who is really working in this uh, disaster risk reduction um, field of science, um, our institute, which is called Institute for Environment and Human Security, focuses on risk and risk reduction, also in the context of climate change, but not only. Um, even for myself, it's, uh, it's increasingly uh, difficult to follow up uh, with the developments if it comes to disasters popping up everywhere, uh, close by us, but also uh, far away uh, globally. And to understand what are the root causes, what are the drivers, how, need, how, how do we need to deal with them? Um, so that was our uh, motivation. And um, the idea was to create a report which is uh, critically discusses root causes, drivers, and impacts, um, and does so in a very uh, systemic uh, uh, and integrated way, uh, but at the same time also um, uh, conveying the message uh, to the public. So it's, it's, uh, it's a scientific uh, report, but written in a language which is, which is accessible um, for the public. It was quite a challenge for us. Um, I think most of the audience is coming more from the science uh, perspective. And I think uh, if you need to start to write in a different way uh, and you need to um, uh, package your uh, messages in a way that it's really understandable also for your grandmother, it's really a challenge, but, uh, but we hope that it's worth to try uh, to be part of the conversation, what we can do. So we work together with a design uh, agency and um, we developed this science-based report for the public. Um, we hope to encourage readers to view these disasters in, um, um, with a different eyes, but also in a very interconnected way uh, to promote awareness, a little bit of panic um, for um, the root causes and for the size of the challenge we face. Um, but also look into the underlying compounding vulnerabilities um, we need to address um, and to showcase solutions which um, not only um, address uh, the symptoms, but can address the root causes actually. Uh, so the way how we selected uh, events um, was that we tried to look into possible learning. So, um, what happened last year, which uh, uh, helps uh, uh, us to tell a story, which can uh, provide learning opportunities uh, for the reader. Um, so it has to be emblematic from processes which are ongoing. For example, you see here the Chinese paddlefish in the left upper corner, which uh, was declared extinct in 21. And um, also we are talking about the Chinese paddlefish, uh, what we want to talk about is the crisis of uh, freshwater fish population. They are under threat, they are endangered. We are losing freshwater fish, fish uh, species globally. And uh, we use, so to say, this um, 
event that um, it was declared uh, extinct to actually tell the story about freshwater fish as a whole. And um, of course, or to also uh, try to work out interesting narratives uh, which um, can stick uh, with the reader. So the events we looked at were the Amazon wildfires and the heat wave in the Arctic, um, explosion in Beirut, um, a series of flooding events uh, in central Vietnam, the extinction of the Chinese fellowfish, uh, COVID-19, uh, Cyclone Amphan, which uh, hit the border region of um, India and Bangladesh, um, then the desert locust outbreak in the Horn of Africa, um, a massive bleaching event in the Great Barrier Reef, and, and the cold wave, a max massive cold wave in uh, Texas. Um, um, so as you can see, the events are different, and some of them intuitively, you can see that will have and has um, a climate um, uh, element, climate change uh, element, but uh, others doesn't or um, doesn't at the surface, so to say. Um, but we intentionally selected events with, which are different so that we can actually learn from them and, and look into um, in the interconnectivity and uh, potential learning opportunities. Um, so we developed for each event a fact sheet, you could say, so to say, the science base, uh, where we looked at um, what happened and why and where and, um, and how. Um, then we developed for each event a uh, simplified um, event three, uh, where we looked into the root causes, drivers, um, primary impact, secondary impacts, and also emerging risks. So to try to understand um, what belongs to, uh, to this event in a way. And um, then along these trees, we developed uh, narrative storylines. Um, so uh, we are not able in this format, we are not able to tell the entire story about the Beirut explosion, but we looked at a storyline which, uh, so to say, um, demonstrates how this was actually not a singular event, but it uh, links in with global processes. Here in the case of a Beirut explosion, how we actually uh, um, trade with large ships our uh, goods and um, how um, the, the trade actually largely unregulated and um, leads to risks which many of us doesn't know and do not anticipate. And that was an important part of the um, root cause why actually um, we had this massive explosion in Beirut. Um, then we looked at the interconnectivity um, among the events, uh, considering um, the root causes, but also direct and, and indirect influences and, and impacts. Um, when we cluster the root causes, uh, we worked out, uh, so to say, um, um, large categories which um, occurred in different uh, um, events. And the three which occurred most often were human-induced greenhouse gas emissions. So yeah, back to climate change, but also our inability to design disaster risk management in a way which uh, help us to, to increase capacity to respond and to um, prevent um, disasters to happen. Um, so in our view, um, they are natural hazards, but disasters are not natural. Disasters are always um, um, a joint outcome of um, human action and the hazard. So we uh, do think that um, our uh, capacities to anticipate, to respond, and to cope um, largely determines the outcome. So prominent examples are if you have um, earthquake in New Zealand, the outcome is very different than if you have it in Haiti. Uh, so the hazard is, is one um, compound, and, and this is what climate change driving very heavily, but uh, we as a society have the capacity to, to, to deal with it in, in different ways. So that's, um, that was um, the second um, um, driver, which we saw very strongly. And um, uh, very often the environmental costs and benefits of our decisions are actually not um, uh, built in, in, in our uh, decision making. So this links back um, again also to Professor Skelencher um, um, in intervention. So uh, oftentimes there are hidden costs, hidden consequences, which we do not um, 
factor in. Uh, so those externalities are uh, many times unseen. In terms of influences between the event, we looked at direct influences such as um, the um, heat wave in the Arctic um, uh, had some influence on the um, uh, Texas uh, cold wave. Uh, the science around it is uh, still, so to say, evolving. There uh, were some studies uh, attributing um, the heat wave uh, to the to the Texas uh, cold wave. Uh, some others disputed it, but uh, this is uh, where, so to say, the the climate attribution diet science is is uh, uh, always taking a little bit of time um, when uh, something happens. Um, but there are also indirect uh, influences. So if you are thinking about COVID-19, uh, COVID-19 disrupted a lot of supply chains. Um, it's reduced uh, the effectiveness of disaster response. It's increased financial vulnerability, also restricted movement. Um, so that uh, also waves in, in this um, um, in our capacity and ability to respond um, to. Um, hazards. Um, so looking a little bit more into COVID-19, how this was actually um, interwoven so much with, with everything has happened. For example, when the Texas cold wave hit, hit um, this actually exacerbated uh, the COVID-19 uh, case numbers and uh, situation uh, in Texas. Um, as there was an electricity cut, so um, ventilators couldn't uh, work, and, um, and there have been uh, cases of death because uh, because of this uh, interlinkage of the two. The same in Beirut, because also um, hospitals have been uh, hit, and um, there were no um, uh, ability anymore to keep distancing. So uh, cases, uh, COVID cases, uh, peaked. And the same um, in in uh, case of uh, the cyclone and fun. So, so to say, it's an example of how different um, events influence each other. But as I said, in general, COVID nineteen also influenced many other disasters and served as a multiplier. Um, just if you are thinking about the uh, uh, desert locust uh, um, outbreak in the Horn of Africa. So um, they was really difficult to uh, bring their um, pesticides to, to control the outbreak and also uh, experts couldn't travel. So basically uh, the containment of the outbreak was uh, much uh, more difficult in such um, circumstances. Um, and if we zoom out um, um, a bit, um, so many of the events share actually um, these emerging risk uh, perspectives. So the climate crisis is very strongly there, but also the, um, the humanitarian crisis in, in areas where um, uh, we actually um, have um, weak states or failed states and where um, there's um, a lack of ability to, to react uh, to these uh, events. And um, very strongly also the biodiversity crisis. And I would say that uh, next to the, the crisis on, on uh, materials, that's the other thing um, um, which, uh, which is looming around the biodiversity crisis. So that's uh, again, something which is not renewable. So lost species are lost. And um, uh, in uh, many cases, we will only learn later uh, what we lost uh, uh, with them. So in terms of solutions and um, what does it mean for panicking or not panicking, um, our next report, which will come out in September, we will much more strongly focus on the solution space. Um, we think that with our solutions, uh, we should consider much more uh, these different spheres of um, um, so the climate crisis, um, disaster risk, biodiversity crisis, I am seeing I am missing out the material crisis, actually, so I learned today uh, as well. And um, um, that we, we get much more aware of the trade-offs uh, between our decisions and um, that uh, whenever we design solutions, we at least get aware of those trade-offs and try to manage them um, so that we try to uh, aim for, for solutions which, uh, which at least doesn't do harm um, for um, uh, the other uh, emerging crisis spheres. 
Um, with that, I would like to, to come to an end. So uh, what we see and what is important for us that um, this world needs to be uh, seen as a, a, a complex and with each other communicating uh, uh, system and that disasters do not just occur, occur far away from us. It's, they are linked to us and to our decisions and they do not occur in a, in a bubble. Um, and uh, through analyzing um, the systems um, created by our choices, attitudes, and our political systems, um, we can actually begin, hopefully, to change um, these patterns. And um, um, this comes back again to panic and not panic. So um, we, we have to do something now, and um, there's no time to, to push it uh, forward. Um, and with that, I would like to close. Thank you very much for your attention. Um, the report is a fully emergible um, online uh, report. Uh, it can be visited uh, here. So um, you have this um, main body of the report, which uh, comes with this public-faced uh, language. And then you have also the technical background papers um, for the 10 events, which can be downloaded. Thank you very much.